we're here with the minister of uh, the electoral minister as well as police and the uh, uh, fire rescue operations. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, especially at this time when the country is preparing for the upcoming by elections and there have been a number of amendments that was recently passed by Parliament to uh, for the smooth running of the elections. I think one of the key amendments there would be the special rules. Uh, the amendment now is the special rules has now been reinstated. And from what I gather, it's not so much uh, the booths themselves, but it's the electoral rolls which is contributing to the number of election petitions uh, prompting from the election special booths after every general elections. Can you elaborate? Um, thank you, Taufik. It's always, uh, always good to uh, communicate with you and talk. Uh, and uh, inform our people of what's happening at government. The amendment we put through is uh, we, we have made it uh, accessible for people to exercise their right to vote because the, the previous law was you had to go to the electorate you were registered in to vote. So there were no special, the special books were taken off. So as an example, if you were, if you were on the road for Alipata or uh, Palalupo, and you reside in town, you have to you have to travel to Alipata or Palalupo to exercise your vote. There were no special booths. What we've done now is brought back the special booth, so you can vote uh, at a special booth if you in Apia. If you reside in Apia but you're noted on uh, in the Savai roll or Alipata roll, the issues I think why. It was enforced that you go and vote in in, in, an, in an electorate instead of a special booth was because there was a view that there are people on the road who are not eligible to be in that road. An example now is the law specifies in order to to vote to be on a an electoral road, you have to be resident in that road, or you are a matai from that from the, a village included in that role. So the only people who now have, uh, as an example, the only right now, if you are a Matai residing in Apia, but your Matai title is from Alipata or is from Savai, you have an option of either voting where you're resident in Apia or you travel to Alipata or to Savai to vote where your Matai title is from. Everybody else outside of the Matai, have, they have to vote where they're resident. So part of uh, the requirement to go vote where you're, where you're, you're registered was to look at that issue. There's an the issue of uh, saying that uh, there were election petitions arising from people giving out gifts and money on the election day at elec uh, election booths. That's, that's one uh, complaint, but the more pressing complaint in my view was the issue of eligibility. Now that you have to vote where you're resident, you should not be voting if your name appears in another role where you're not resident. So I, I prefer the residential uh, requirement that now exists in the law that you vote where you're resident. And what's going to help with enforcing and ensuring that the actual roles reflect uh, the situation in Samoa is there's going to be a census um, carried out at the end of this year, and that census will tell us where people reside. So, the census should reflect the role for the next general election, except for Matai, because they are in a special bracket where you, you have the option of either registering where you're resident or registering where your Matai title is from. So, from what I gather, is based on that census, you'll be using that census to re reinforce the law where you vote from where you live, cleaning up the electoral rolls now. That's the next step that you're planning under your tenure? That's that's what we're moving to. The, mm -hmm. the electoral roll should reflect the census, and the census will be used to enforce that. So if uh, 
we should not have a situation where uh, you are residing in Apia, but you're voting from somewhere else if you are not a Matai. Uh, in a separate issue, the Electoral Commission, there have been a number of concerns publicly raised mm. related to the implementation of certain requirements in the law. Mm. The Electoral Commission is one avenue to review mm. uh, some of these grievances. What's the take there? What, oh, when do you hope to have the Electoral Commission uh, reviewing the outcomes or strength and the weaknesses and the problems from the last election? Oh, thank you, Taufik. That's a very, uh, a very good question. It's very important to review the whole the electoral laws as well as the issues that arose from the last the general election on the 9th of April and the by-elections that, that are going to be held in November. So from, from the past, we've had an electoral commission constituted and review the electoral laws and all the issues that arose from a particular general election and by-elections. So that, uh, this election will, will not be an exception. We're going to constitute a, an electoral commission um, after the by-elections. And they will review all the problems that and issues that arose from from the current election, the one on 9th of May, and the by-elections, and look at uh, the strengths of the current law and also the weaknesses of the of uh, the current electoral laws uh, going forward, so that we can make amendments where appropriate, and also the law will reflect government policy on uh, election issues, like eligibility, uh, who, who uh, what will be the eligibility criteria for the next general election. And one of the most important things that uh, the government will look at is any criteria that's going to be put in for the next general election um, must uh, have time for people who are going to run in the next general election in 2026 to be able to fulfill those criteria. And that's one of the, may, may, one of the most fundamental points that the government will ensure that any, any, any of the matters reviewed by the Commission or the findings by the Commission, whatever their report, uh, whatever comes in their report that are implemented, that those uh, matters being implemented will, that, that people who run in the, who are intending to run in the next election will be able to meet those, those criteria. So whatever the outcome of the Electoral Commission, their recommendations, that will be enforced in the 2026 general elections? Yes. We, we will incorporate the changes they recommend and that the government agrees with will be uh, proposed in legislation. And then that, uh, that will be the basis for uh, the next general elections. Uh, just the last question, Norman. One of the most debated issues in the last general elections mm -hmm was the percentage of women who should be residing, sitting in parliament. Is the current government going to revisit that law for clarity or...? Well, like, like I said, the commission will look at all the issues that um, arose from the general election and the, and the by-elections. And no doubt the government will look at what the commission comes up with. And the government too will look at the issue of increased participation of women in parliament whether the, the current system is the best way to fulfill that ambition or whether there's another method by which we can increase the participation of women in parliament, of women who want to contest and be able to, to win an election to get into parliament. Those will all be issues for the government to look at. Thank you, Minister.